Assalamu alaikum everyone this is Asma Mushtaq from the Double E Vibes and in this tutorial I am going to perform the AC analysis of the common emitter amplifier and it can be seen that this amplifier has been designed using the voltage divider bias. The three capacitors C1, C2 and C3 are used which actually provide the AC coupling. So the purpose of the C1 is actually to, to filter out any kind of the DC component present in the input circuitry so that it doesn't actually affect the Q point or biasing point of this transistor and similarly if the load resistor or if the load present at the output side is having any kind of the DC component then it shouldn't affect the Q point so C1 and C3 are used for that purposes while the C2 capacitor is also known as the bypass capacitor and we will see that this bypass capacitor is actually necessary for improving the voltage gain of this amplifier okay so right now i will start the ac analysis all the capacitors appear as effectively short because their value has been adjusted such that for the given frequency of the input signal their reactance is approximately equal to zero fine so this is the first thing that you should remember secondly the dc source will be appeared as ac ground why because we assume that the internal resistance of this dc source is zero and that's why there will be no voltage drop across it and hence we will assume that this dc source is actually at the ac ground fine and the AC equivalent circuit for this amplifier will be drawn how because this capacitor has been replaced with the short circuitry and at the emitter terminal we can see that there is a resistor while there is a short circuit present so whenever we will have a resistor in parallel with the short circuit obviously the equivalent point will be a simply short circuit fine so emitter will be at AC ground okay then let's just replace this dc source with the ground which is the common point of this circuitry then we can see that one of the terminal of the resistor r1 is at the base while the second point is at the ground similarly the terminal of r2 is at base while the second terminal is at the ground so let's just start drawing the circuitry for this since the emitter was supposed to be at the ac ground so that's why it's replaced with the ground while at the base terminal one of the resistors is r1 and the second resistor is r2 so i will mark it as r1 this is r2 now what will happen at the collector terminal the rc com uh, one component of the rc uh, one terminal of the rc is connected at the collector terminal while the other should be at the ac ground so one terminal of the rc is at the collector while the other terminal will be at the ground fine so in this way you will draw the equivalent circuit of this transistor all right and one thing more at the input side if this AC source has certain type of the internal resistance, I can represent it by RS. So RS is the internal resistance of this AC source and here is the magnitude or the input value of this AC source which will be marked by V in since they are the small signal amplifier. So usually the magnitude is in millivolts. All right. Now. If we assume that the internal resistance of this AC source is zero, then all the source voltages should appear at the base of the transistor. But since this is not the case, so that's why we have to consider three points while determining the voltages at the base terminal. The first one is the RS resistance, which is the source resistance. Okay. The second one is the bias resistors value, which is R1 parallel to r2 and the third one is the r in base which is actually the resistor seen at the base of the transistor fine and the total input resistance will be the 
parallel combination of these three resistances so r in total resistance which will be the resistance at the base of the transistor it's equal to the parallel combination of r1 r2 and r in base of the transistor fine and let's just find the value of this r in base resistance and in this way we will be able to determine the total input resistance of this amplifier to develop an expression for the input resistance looking at the base we will use the simplified r parameter model of the transistor and then we will find the input resistance while looking at the base fine so let's just draw the r parameter model of the transistor so this is the r parameter model of the transistor where the transistor has been replaced with a current gain and its magnitude is equal to beta ac times ib fine and this is actually the current present at the flector terminal so that's why it has been marked with the ic and one thing you must notice over here the smaller subscripts are indicating the ac quantities fine okay so uh, looking at the base r in base we can see that this is equal to the ratio of the vb means output voltage and the base current sorry base voltages and the base current fine the base voltages which are actually the voltages at the base with respect to the ground are equal to the product of ie into re as per the ohms law while ib which is which can be found from here ib can be written as ic over beta ac ic divided by beta ac and as we know that ic is approximately equal to ie so that's why this formula can be simplified as IE will be cancelled out and R in base will be equal to beta AC times of RE where R is the internal resistance of the transistor and its magnitude is equal to 25 millivolt divided by IE which is the emitter current present because of the DC biasing fine hence after determining the R in total we will be able for finding the after determining the R in base, we will be able to find the R in total of the transistor, which is the parallel combination of R1, R2 and R in base. Okay, the next step is to find the output resistance of the transistor. The output resistance of the transistor can be simply treated or found from the equivalent circuit of the transistor fine how because if you look at the output side the collector terminal is actually the output side of this transistor okay and at this moment we can see the rc which is the collector resistance present at the transistor terminal fine one thing more when we draw the equivalent model of the transistor r parameter based okay then at that moment there is an internal rc resistance rc fine which appears in parallel with the current model of the transistor and hence we can say that the rc and is parallel to smaller rc and since the magnitude of this rc resistance is very very large so that's why the only output resistance R out is approximately equal to the collector resistance of the transistor which is present at the collector terminal fine now the simplified circuit of the AC equivalent circuit can also be drawn like that here is an input voltage source and here is the source resistance which is parallel with the r in total so here we will have r in total 
here is the rs resistance and next to it here is the base of the transistor fine now the voltages that will appear at the base of the transistor can be represented by the smaller subscript vb and the voltage developed at this point can be found using the voltage division rule so vb is equal to r in total divided by r in total plus rs into vs okay and if we find the ratio of this like vb over vs this is equal to r in total divided by rs plus r in total if the source resistance or while looking at this expression if rs is very very small such that it's approximately equal to 0 then this expression reduces to vb is equal to vs which means that all the source voltages will be forwarded at the base of the transistor and there will be no voltage reduction while the source voltages come or passes through the r1 and r2 and appears at the base fine and if this is not the case and there is certain amount of the rs is present then the ratio of vb over vs is known as the attenuation of the input signal attenuation of input signal vs fine now let's try the voltage gain of this amplifier voltage gain is actually the ratio of the output voltage divided by the input voltage which is vc over vb in this case fine and vc is equal to the product of alpha ac into ie into rc and on further simplification we can write it as it's equal to ie into rc or ic into rc why because alpha ac into i is approximately equal to ic okay and similarly vb is equal to ie into re which is the internal resistance of the amplifier or the transistor hence we can see that av is the voltage gain and it is equal to ie rc or icrc both are same so that's why it doesn't matter and similarly ie into re and from here we can just write it as rc over r e so this is the formula of the voltage gain of the common emitter amplifier if you have some questions and you want to see how the load resistance actually affects the voltage gain of the transistor then we can see at the output side of the transistor the effective collector resistance is no longer equal to merely rc why because we can see this capacitor will be replaced by a short circuit fine so once it is replaced by this short circuit the terminal of this collector resistance and this load resistance are at the same potential while the second terminal of this rc and the rl are actually grounded so what will happen the effective collector resistance rc will be in parallel to rl okay rl and hence the rc which is represented by the smaller rc subscript it will be equal to the parallel combination of rc and rl and hence what will happen the voltage gain av will be represented by rc smaller subscript and re 
fine and the equivalent combination can will always be smaller as compared to the actual resistance rc and hence the voltage gain will be reduced fine and similarly if we you do not use this bypass capacitor then this emitter resistance will also appear in the expression of the voltage gain and it will re further reduce the overall voltage gain of this amplifier thank you for watching